Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Edward Pryor, and I am a Director of Product Management here at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and I'll be your host for today. At the recent m and conference in Portland, Oregon, Thermo Fisher announced an exciting collaboration with Structura Biotechnology to offer Smart EPU with Embedded CryoSpark Live. As you'll hear today, Smart EPU with Embedded CryoSpark Live enables cryo-electron microscopy users of all experience levels to acquire high-quality data while reducing the time it takes to obtain 3D protein structural information from days to hours. In today's webinar, you'll hear from two presenters, Julio Ortiz, Senior Product Marketing Manager for CryoEM Software here at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and Ali Punjani, CEO at Structura Biotechnology. With that, I'll turn it over to Julio to begin our presentation. Thank you very much, Edward, for the introduction, and thank you all of you for your participation in this webinar. I hope you can find it useful because it's about saving time, make a better use of your microscope, and at the end, become more productive. It's about Embedded CryoSpark Live, a software that we launched recently in the last microscopy and microanalysis meeting in Portland. It is a solution for integrated real-time data analysis for high-quality 3D protein structures. I want to start calling the mission of our company Thermofisher Scientific, which is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. And it is very satisfying for us to see publication of this kind and evidence of the direct impact that our products have on medical research. In this case, Chen, Teng, and Sen present us the three-dimensional structure of different complexes between the somatostatin receptor and different um, G proteins. And they found something very interesting with the binding of some compounds to the agonist binding pocket of the receptor here at the top. They can um, um, realize that there is a change in the specificity of the receptor for different G proteins and in consequence, different signaling uh, pathways. To tell you the truth, I, I choose this um, paper because I worked many, many years ago in transducing the G protein of the visual system. And it's for me um, uh, fascinating what is happening nowadays. And this work fa was facilitated by the use of our products, the VitroBot Mark IV for vitrification or Cryotem, the Titan Cryos, equipped with a Falcon 4. For software acquisition, they use EPU in a previous version, 2.12. And the author for data processing use a combined, combined techniques available in different packages. One of them, CryoSpark, which is the advanced um, uh, software for, for image analysis from our collaborators, Estructura Biotechnology. Overall, this study facilitated the design of drugs with selective G protein signaling to improve therapeutic efficacy. And independently of the application, we celebrate always the success of the cryogen community because we know that behind every of these structures, there is plenty of work. It's a work that I start with a sample creation followed by biochemistry optimization to enable cryo -EM. The step of vitrification is relatively straightforward, but with a very variable rate of success because it depends on sample properties. So you need to go back and forth in an iterative way between biochemistry optimization, vitrification, and some data collection at the microscope that we call a screening until you are sure that your protein is uh, embedded in a very thin layer of ice and very well distributed in a space. When you have achieved that, you can proceed with the data acquisition, the data processing, and the model building pipelines. As you see, the workflow is complex. In the last two decades, we have a focus on this step of screening and data acquisition with our program EPU. We have achieved a very good level of automation, but of course there is always a space for improvements. So we want to increase this um, automation and our vision is to facilitate the training of new users, make experimental setup straightforward, reduce the operator time spent at the microscope, and ultimately 
What we would like is a fully automated data acquisition process. And for that, we need help. And we are very glad that we receive help from our collaborators, Estructura Biotechnology, which have uh, plenty of experience in advanced uh, data processing and uh, have a product also that is uh, operating exactly in this interface between screening data acquisition and data processing, which is CryoSpark Life. We decided to collaborate and our first proposal toward this vision is the integration of CryoSpark Live into a smart EPU software. We would like to further automate the data acquisition process to allow a rapid sample assessment and determine if further optimization is necessary, reduce the time to 3D structural information from days to hours, and facilitate the downstream data processing. For the rest of the presentation, I have the following outline. I will present you an introduction of a smart EPU. Ali will uh, give an overview about CryoSpark Live. We answer the question, what is embedded CryoSpark Live? We present a statement from Alexei Rack uh, from Sanofi, who has the opportunity to test the software before we go to closing remarks and questions. So good, what is a smart EPU? A smart EPU is a software platform for data acquisition and screening that aims higher degree of automation and ease of use. It has three functional blocks. Uh, the first one is about data acquisition with the programs EPU3 and EPU Multigrid, or where customers are used to these programs. The second block is about image evaluation with our solutions EPU Quality Monitor or Embedded CryoSpark Live. And now you know where to locate the new component of a smart EPU. And um, we have a, a third um, block that is about decision algorithms that we call smart plugins. They take the information from uh, the images that have been evaluated to modify the data acquisition parameters on the fly. Um, there is a fourth component of a smart EPU that is called Athena. It's our software for data management and visual reporting. It's uh, shared with other applications and allows the communication between the components of a smart EPU and present the results uh, to, to the users. Um, in a web interface that you can access uh, everywhere. I will review very quickly the data acquisition block. EPU3 and EPU Multigrid have a user interface organized in tabs. The first one is the home page with optical and camera presets thoughts for a fast start in data collection. You don't need any more to introduce all these parameters manually if you have used these presets, but you still have access to them in the preparation tab. Then you can create atlases for all your grids in your autoloader. These are low magnification maps uh, of your grids and EPU provides you already uh, the initial classification of your squares. Then you have auto functions with all the routines that uh, the program will need for automatic data acquisition. And you have the final tab uh, called also EPU in which you can go through the pipeline of creation of the session. First, you need to curate the selection of your squares. You need to select holes, partially that is uh, happening uh, automatically. You can define templates of where to acquire images on your holes. And um, once, once you have set this uh, session for one grid, if you have EPU multi-grid, then you can apply the same preparation to other grids in a queue system and then let it run uh, in a, an autonomous manner for hours or days. Then the program is start to collect a high resolution images. We can continue with the image evaluation block and our program 
EPU Quality Monitor or EQM. EQM per executes motion correction and CTF estimation and uh, calculate a CTF confidence range, which is a good metric of image quality. This enables the users to immediately identify problematic images and act to fix or skip the data acquisition. Allows users to filter and export only quality data, facilitated the post processing, and it is embedded in Athena portal for easy access anywhere. The peculiarity of having a EPU quality monitor inside a smart EPU is that the data can fit smart logins for automated adjustment of data collection parameters. With that, I will turn the presentation over to Ali Punjani, CEO from Estructura Biotechnology, for an introduction to CryoSpark Live. Please, Ali. Great, thanks a lot, Julio. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and give an overview of what CryoSpark Live is, what it does, what its capabilities are. CryoSpark Live is a real-time software system that's designed to enable processing of cryo-EM data right at the microscope, and specifically to help optimize data collection of single particle data sets. The main purpose of CryoSpark Live is to complete the feedback loop that you see here, where a user can understand their sample while it's still in the microscope and then make data collection decisions on the fly. <clears throat> CryoSpark Live can keep up with data collection from typical cryo-EM microscopes, even at the fastest rates, and it helps to capture the value of those microscopes and other cryo-EM equipment that has been acquired by providing a seamless workflow that goes through an entire end-to-end -end single particle processing chain. That starts with pre-processing of the raw data, that's motion correction, CTF estimation, particle picking, and then streaming 2D classification that leads to insights right away about what is actually in your sample followed by ab initio reconstruction and high resolution 3D refinement that let you get insight into diagnostics and other tools that can help make those decisions at the microscope. I'll go into some detail on, into all of those phases of processing, but overall, the purpose of CryoSpark Live is to simplify the process of getting to a high resolution structure quickly from cryo-EM data. There are several use cases that I just want to highlight that CryoSpark Live really enables. The first and most important is to get rapid visual feedback of your sample right at the microscope. That means you can get insight into issues like preferred orientation, tell if your sample actually even has a likelihood of reaching high resolution by observing the statistics of your data, and those are all computed in real time. And together, all that feedback means that it's possible in just a few hours to start making go and no-go decisions about your data collection. Maybe you have a bad grid. Maybe you have a sample that needs to go back to sample preparation. All those issues can be identified early on and you can decide to stop collecting early or collect further on the samples that do turn out to be good. You can also find out what you need to change about an ongoing data collection. That includes things like tilting the stage, changing your defocus set settings, etc. The insight that you get from CryoSpark Live can also help to give information all the way back up the chain in your CryoEM workflow, back to sample preparation, where maybe you need to change your vitrification or purification strategy. And now you can know that right at this microscope rather than waiting days after collection is finished to find out that you actually have to go back a step. All these insights together mean that you can really enable this goal that we've had for a number of years that's now actually possible, which is that you can start with a sample start data collection, and within just a few hours, get enough insight to make decisions on the fly. And then within a few more hours, hopefully less than a day, even walk away with a high resolution structure. Once you've got that, that can be your starting point for further advanced processing in more advanced tools like CryoSpark itself. I'm just gonna go through a few of the actual things that CryoSpark Live does. There are three main phases of computation that happen in real time. The first phase is pre-processing, meaning motion correction, CTF estimation, particle picking, and particle extraction that all happen on the fly as new data comes in. These tools are all automated and all reprocess data as you change parameters or change inputs going into the system. They also come with built-in interactive tools right in the CryoSpark Live interface that let you, for example, set up automatic exposure curation so that you can separate good and bad images based on the attributes that are computed from those early pre-processing stages. 
it also lets you help it also helps you to set up particle picking and iterate that so that you can visually see what your particles look like whether they're being well picked well centered and so on once all of that is set up your data collection can continue unattended and results like streaming 2d classification can be processed in real time streaming 2d classification is the next stage of processing in crosswork live and it performs real-time classification that lets you see an updating view every few minutes of what's actually in your sample these 2D classes are computed in a way where we don't have to go back through the entire data set to update results. Instead, every few minutes as new particles come in, we can see what the 2D classes are looking like and get really quick, really fast a sense of what's happening in the sample as we move around the grid and so on. Once these 2D classes are computed and you've selected which ones you think are good, the particles that fall into those classes are automatically sent over to the next stage of real-time processing, which is streaming three reconstruction and refinement. CrowdSpark Live in includes an integrated ab initio reconstruction module that can first produce an initial model if you don't already have one. It then takes that initial model and refines it again in real time, updating every few minutes as data comes in to high resolution. The high resolution refinement that you get provides a lot of very important diagnostics that you can't get without going to the 3D stage. For example, the resolution estimate, which updates again every few minutes. You can also look at the 3D density map to look for issues like streaking and other problems that may occur due to sample orientation issues and the orientation distribution and other diagnostics that really paint a picture of what's in the sample. Together, all these tools help to complete the workflow and complete that loop so that a user can make decisions on the fly. With that, I'll hand it back to Julio to tell us more about Embedded CrowdSpark Live. Thanks, Ali. And now that we have an overview of both programs, Smart EPU and CryoSpark Live, let's talk about the integrated solution, a Smart EPU with Embedded CryoSpark Live. Embedded CryoSpark Live is in our blog for image evaluation and enriched the capabilities that we had previously with EQM with additional tools for image analysis. Embedded CryoSpark Life is a version of a Structura Biotechnology CryoSpark Life designed to seamlessly integrate into thermoscientific smart EPU software. We promote it as a turnkey solution because it's pre installed and optimized for maximum performance with thermofisia microscopes. You don't have to worry about uh, hardware or IT issues. Um, because the program is updated by digital service and the training is provided by our application specialist. Embedded CryoSpar Live enables users to immediately identify key sample characteristics and adjust acquisition strategies to obtain maximum resort results in the shortest possible time is integrated into an streamlined workflow with automated setup configuration. Several parameters that in the not embedded CryoSpark Live version uh, were introduced manually uh, that have to do with the microscope now are uh, automatically um, retrieved from, from the instrument. And um, you have uh, the Athena portal to image the uh, for, for visualizing the image transfer and uh, access all the results of the workflow. So something to recall is that uh, Embedded Creative Spark Live powers a smart plugins for automatic adjustment of data collection parameters, as it was also done um, by EQM. Now, EQM versus Embedded Creative Spark Live, what is the difference? I hope that uh, the difference is clear. So you have with EQM uh, motion correction and CTF estimation for uh, real-time image quality information. With Embedded Creative Spark Live, additionally, you have particle picking, 2D classification, and 3D reconstruction refinement. Embedded Creative Spark Live provides real-time image and sample quality information, giving users the power to refine imaging and processing parameters to succeed in the structure determination. Both EQM and Embedded Creative Spark Life 
can provide input for smart plugins. And what are those plugins that we have been talking about? At the moment, we have three smart plugins enabling feedback loops. For example, if you monitor the, the focus value of your images, you can detect alias from the desired focus range, and the plugin will adjust the focus at the microscope so that the following images will remain between the focus range that you specified at the beginning of the session. We have similar plugins for uh, monitoring the stage waiting time and uh, thus pro preventing um, excessive drift of the sample. And we have a smart grid skip that considers the metric of CTF confidence range an indicator of image quality. And if several images are recorded with a low confidence range, um, then the plugin skip that grid. These are basic plugins. We plan to add new ones. And then I am very optimistic about the chances that Embedded Cryo Spark Life offers to take decision based on sample attributes. At this time, I want to mention also that we have a first application of artificial intelligence in a smart TPU um, that is used during the setting of the session. It is, called, it is called a smart selector. We have trained a neural, a neural network to identify uh, those holes that are suitable for uh, high resolution acquisition and ex exclude all those um, holes that are contaminated or empty. The filter enhances that qu data quality, operates very quickly, and is easy to use. This kind of uh, technology um, is what we expect to uh, apply in synergy with Embedded Radio Spark Life for further automation of the workflow. And this is a short video that we prepared to give you an idea of how does Embedded Radio Spark Life works. Embedded Radio Spark Life is started from an existing workflow associated to an EPU session in Athena. When you have selected both, you can start Radio Spark Life with a couple of clicks. The setup is easier in the embedded version because you only must set parameters not related to the microscope or camera, but with the sample, the particle size and extraction box size. You apply these parameters and start the session. The inset at the lower right corner display the corresponding smart EPU user interface, which is showing a data acquisition session in progress with the stage moving to selected places on the grid and recording images. It takes around 30 seconds for individual movies being loaded and motion corrected. And this is a real time here in the clip. The individual exposures and their CTF are displayed and you can easily browse them and select filters based on image quality. And Automated particle picking is started by default. This uh, blow picker method needs commonly some manual interventions to adjust parameters to the particular sample and the image's condition being used. It is useful for an initial extraction of particles for 2D averages that can be used later as uh, templates for more specific picking. When enough data has been acquired, you can create a 3D app initial model for a novel structure of your target. After a few hours of data collation and further refinements, you can get a first 3D high resolution model of your protein or complex, in this case, apoferritin at 2.18 angstroms with 48,000 images around four hours from that acquisition start.
I want to become more quantitative and give you an impression of the time needed for the main steps in the workflow. This is an example of execution of a data collection monitored by uh, Embedded CryoSpark Live. Here we use apoferritin as benchmark protein sample on a glacius with Falcon 4. Due to the high symmetry of apoferritin, we know that about 90 minutes of uh, data collection are enough to achieve a map of high resolution. If you start simultaneously in very great spark life with a smart EPU data collection, you can start the alignment and classification of particles about 30 minutes after starting. And uh, it will finish almost right after the data collection has been stopped. This is possible in this system because the data collection throughput is about 450 images per hour using AFIS, while the throughput of embedded cryo spark life uh, in preprocessing and stream 2D is about 580 uh, image process by hour in 2D. Um, for, uh, for other uh, systems and other kind of proteins, the times will change. Um, but I wanted to mention uh, this uh, capability of Embedded Cryo Spark Life to, um, to cope with this th throughput in the data collection. Um, later, you can also uh, start the trigger the three dimensional analysis uh, after one hour of uh, data collection start with about 65,000 particles. And this analysis of this number of particles take, will take about one hour and is a good decision point for apoferritin to decide if uh, you would like to continue the processing until have uh, processed all the data and achieve uh, the, the 2.13 answer resolution. Uh, that happens more or less 3.5 hour after collection stop. Um, but as I said, uh, apoferritin is a special case with uh, high symmetry. In other examples, um, the, for more general uses, the um, data collection will extend probably for uh, many hours or even days. Um, but still, the outcome from embedded cryos by life is, uh, is meaningful and particular, uh, particular useful in, in these cases. Um, because you will start to have um, 2D classes uh, during the, the first hours of data collection and even a three-dimensional structure, maybe a low resolution uh, in, in this fair, uh, fair first hours. And you can easily decide if it's worth to continue with the data collection or if you need to interrupt it or modify some parameters uh, in the data acquisition process. But let's continue with uh, a testimonial from Alexei Krak, um, head of the biostructure and biophysics from Sanofi, to summarize the benefits of a smart EPU with embedded cryospar life. Hello, my name is Alexey Rak. I'm heading biostructure and biophysics department at Integrated Drug Discovery France and coordinating structure biology globally in our company. Our mission is to support and streamline our drug discovery projects by rationalizing them. That makes the projects easier to execute and both time and cost effective. Since a couple of years, we are using CRI-EM structure determination of protein targets and protein complexes and appreciate the CRI-EM resolution revolution technology advancement, especially from the moment when we internalized CRI-EM back in 2020. 
The technology is great and it is wider applicable than X-ray crystallography. It really significantly reduces time for gene to structure process for the new targets in our operation. However, the data collection and data processing time for crime structure determination, if reduced, can be further impacting drug discovery. So we are extremely happy to have access now to the new smart EPU software as it enhances efficiency to use Cryo. With the new software, we can optimize and do quicker images evaluation and analysis so that we do not waste our time collecting not meaningful data. Further automation in EPU multigrid is also reducing time in setting up the data collection. And the embedded in the smart EPU CryoSpark Live allows to pre-process the data and reduce bulkness of it, which is important, especially when transferring and storing the data on the cloud. So the access to the new smart EPU will positively contribute to our throughput and the pace with which we are structurally informing drug discovery in Sanofi, which means we can deliver faster the drugs to the patients. Thanks, Alexei, for your testimonial. We appreciate it. For my closing remarks, I want to highlight that the Smart EPU with embedded CryoSpark Life is available in all thermoscientific cryotemps platforms, the Tundra, the Glaciers, and the Cryos. Besides the benefits of the use of microscope time more efficiently and the connectivity to post-processing workflows, for me, what is more exciting about having Embedded CryoSpark Life are the possibilities that the program opens for the future. Those of you who have worked at the microscope know that most decisions we take daily are based on what we see on the pictures. We judge sample attributes. Now that the microscope are no longer only taking images, but can see the sample, we can transfer the expertise of microscopies to a smart APU powered by AI solutions. Combining classical approaches with trained neural networks, we can achieve a fully autonomous data acquisition experience at the microscope. This might take time, but we are firmly, firmly committed to that goal. And with your support, we can progress faster. I hope that uh, you get enthusiastic about it and adopt our software very soon. I invite you to follow us in social media and visit our web pages. All com companies have additional information about Embedded Creators Park Life. And before we answer some questions, I would like to thank you for your attention and also thanks our R&D team. I recently had the chance to participate in a meeting with many developers and I was very pleased to, to see how are they organized. It's a very professional team. Now we can answer some questions. All right, thank you, Julio. Thank you, Ali, for a very exciting presentation on Embedded CryoSpark Live. Uh, there have been a number of questions that have come through from the audience. Uh, and so we're going to try to get to as many of these as possible in uh, in the remainder of the time. So uh, we'll start off with some ones. Uh, Julio, maybe this one to you. Uh, when will Smart EPU and EQM and Embedded CryoSpark Live uh, become available? Um, they are already available. Um, we um, set the, the files to download. Um, but of course, as I mentioned in the video, um, our product is supported by our digital services. So once you get uh, the appropriate license, they, they can um, install the software. Great. Thanks, Julio. Uh, just moving along. Uh, Ali, here's a question for you. Uh, can users export, make sure I asked this correctly. 
Yeah. Can users export the output files generated by embedded CryoSpark Live and continue processing that data on uh, CryoSpark or other post-processing software, for example? Absolutely. That's a great question. So the short answer is yes, absolutely. Embedded CryoSpark Live output data is completely compatible, for example, with the full standard CryoSpark that you may have used before. Um, the outputs are also available in sort of standard formats that can be converted and imported into other software for your use. Um, just to dive into the, the downstream uh, interplay a little bit, um, when you create a new data processing session in Embedded CryoSpark Live, Embedded CryoSpark Live will also create a CryoSpark project folder and all of its output data will be stored in there. So as soon as that, that uh, Embedded CryoSpark Live processing session is complete, you can take that project directory and import it into a standard CryoSpark instance that may be installed in your own hardware um, and continue doing advanced processing just as if you had done all the processing in your own CryoSpark instance to begin with. So it's quite a seamless connection in that way. Great. Thanks, Ali. Uh, the next question I think I can actually answer. Uh, there's been a few questions about uh, hardware specifics. Uh, so uh, let's see here. One asking uh, what server hardware comes with the package to support uh, CryoSpark Live processing. Uh, and then another question about uh, where does CryoSpark Live run? Is it on a designated server or the, or the camera server? So uh, basically, yeah, the, the answer to these two questions is the same. So we, as part of the, of the embedded CryoSpark Live offering, we provide all of the hardware necessary to run uh, embedded CryoSpark Live, uh, and this runs on the on the DMP server, which is connected to uh, connected to the microscope. So hopefully that answers uh, both of those questions. And I think there's a few more coming in now uh, about um, about hardware. Where I think that same answer applies. Um, Here's maybe a question for, for Julio related to the first one I asked. Uh, so uh, let's see, I have EPU 2. Uh, can I upgrade to EPU 3.0? Um, yes. The upgrade from EPU 2 to EPU uh, 3.0 or X is uh, a, a normal a standard um, upgrade. And it's included in the license that um, most of the user have uh, with EPU2. Uh, so it's a question just to uh, upgrade the software and it can be easily done. Uh, to get all the functionalities of a smart EPU, you need the appropriate licenses with a smart EPU, uh, Blue CQM, or a smart EPU with Embedded Credit Spark Live. Thanks, Julio. Um... Let's see here. All right, Ali, here's a question on, on CryoSpark Live. So uh, for, for users, again, I'm trying to combine a few questions into one. For users that already have or are already using CryoSpark Live, um, can they connect that to Smart EPU or, or do they need something uh, additional? Another great question. Currently, CryoSpark Live does not connect to Athena or Smart EPU. Embedded CryoSpark Live is a solution that contains, alongside the algorithms that are in CryoSpark Live and the interactive tools and everything else, contains the integration code that allows it to connect it to Smart EPU and Athena. So that is one of the primary aspects of Embedded CryoSpark Live that makes it different. Great. Thanks, Ali. Um, let's see. Julio, I think this is a question you can answer. So, uh, what movie format does, or what what formats of movies does Embedded CryoSpark Live support? Um, and what are the output formats uh, for motion corrected images? Yeah, um, yeah. For the cameras, uh, Falcon three and four, the formats uh, that uh, Embedded CryoSpark Live uses are MRC or EER. And uh, for the um, K2 or K3, it can be um, also TIFF uh, uh, compressed format, okay? The output uh, always of the, the average uh, motion corrected pictures are MRC, yeah. Great. Thank you, Julio. Um, a few more questions are coming in about hardware specifically. So maybe I didn't answer the the first time correctly. So when I when I said that you know for embedded CryoSpark Live, all of the hardware uh, is is provided. 
maybe I could be a little bit more specific about what specifically that is. That includes the uh, that includes the GPUs, uh, the extra memory, and um, an SSD drive that uh, those pieces of hardware are required to to run embedded CrowdSpark Live. And again, that exists on the on the DMP server. All right. Uh, let's see. Just scrolling through here, trying to combine a few of the questions that um, that have been asked here. Um, Ali, another question came in. Um, similar to to the previous one uh but maybe a little bit more clarification of how does embedded cryospark live interact with uh with cryospark sure definitely i can answer that one so um this is somewhat similar to what i mentioned before about uh, transferring of files and importing of projects the way that embedded cryospark live and a separate cryospark instance interact is that Embedded CrySpark Live creates inter intermediate and final output data in a format that's directly compatible with CrySpark. You can also use those files in other programs. They're standard MRC files for particles, uh, MRC files for motion corrected micrographs, and uh, CrySpark output files that are readable by other tools for uh, metadata and things like that. But uh, the, the native outputs come out in a format that is directly compatible with CrySpark. So in particular, as I mentioned, Embedded CrySpark Live will create a CrySpark project directory for every data collection session that you run. And that project directory can be imported into your own CrySpark instance uh, at the same time or at a later time for seamless further processing of the data, uh, advanced processing, and all the tools that you're used to in CrySpark itself. Great. Thanks, Ali. Uh, Question about EQM, uh, Julio, maybe this one to you. Uh, can users have, yeah, can users have both EQM and embedded CryoSpark Live on running on the same instrument? Well, actually they are uh, alternatives. They are exclusive because uh, the, um, the way the software uh, handle the uh, information provided by, by the software, uh, are unique. So you have one uh, or the other image uh, evaluation program. Um, Embedded Creative Spark Live uh, has all the functionalities of like EQM. So um, there is maybe no reason to have um, the two uh, alternatives uh, running in the same instrument. Great. Thanks, Julio. Uh, I'll take a stab at answering this next question. I think it's uh, pretty good. So for uh, the AI that you, you described, Julio, around uh, Smart Selector, uh, somebody had asked, can we change the setting and teach AI to our needs? And that, that's a great suggestion. Right now, the, the uh, neural network that is used for Smart Selector is a pre-trained neural network. However, it is in our roadmap to to have a little bit more robustness around uh, that algorithm and, and uh, have a self-training algorithm based on the samples that, that are coming through your, your workflow. So um, as of right now, uh, right now it's a pre-trained network, but um, uh, but there's plans to, to make that a little bit more robust. Let's see. Just going through a few of these have been answered already in different forms. Um, here's a good question for, for you, Ali. Uh, how or has um, embedded CryoSpark Live been modified at all? Does it does it include different or new functions with respect to standalone or, or yeah, standalone CryoSpark Live? Great, sure. That's also a great question. Um, so in terms of the core functionality algorithms that are used for processing the data itself and the actual outputs that are created, embedded CrySpark Live and CrySpark Live are currently exactly the same. So they do the same motion correction, CTF estimation, particle picking, 2D classification, refinement, et cetera. Uh, the primary differences are that embedded CrySpark Live has a bi-directional interface with Athena and EPU. It's also been optimized to work on the specific hardware that's going to be shipped with it, um, and specifically on two GPUs only. Um, and uh, it's also built in a way that ensures that it can securely and, and uh, in an authenticated way access the Athena uh, APIs and the, all the instrumentation that Thermo Fisher has for managing data that comes out of the microscope. The user interface has also been changed just a slight bit on the configuration tab for those who are uh, familiar with CryoSpark Live. 
um, some of the options and inputs are no longer necessary in embedded CrySpark Live since those inputs come directly from uh, Athena and Smart EPU. Um, so there are less inputs to provide before you can start a session. But otherwise, the interfaces for curating your data, looking at particle picks, looking at the micrographs, those are all the same. Great. Thanks, Ali. Uh, another question about availability, uh, maybe to you, Julio. Um, is embedded CrowdSpark Live available only on new instruments or new tools, or can it be installed on existing tools in the field? Uh, no. Uh, Embedded Graphics Parallax and, and a Smart EPU is available um, and pre installed in, a, in our new platforms. Um, but of course, uh, you can make retrofits. It can be installed in, in existing, um, existing instruments. Um, everything depends on your configuration. So it's difficult to answer the question because there are many systems outside. Um, but of course, if you want to uh, use a Medicreus Parallel or even QM, you need Athena. Athena needs to run in a server, as you mentioned, the DMP uh, to server. So for a pre existing instrument, our recommendation is to talk with uh, our account managers and with your account managers, and they can provide a tailored solution because uh, we need to know which is exactly the configuration that you have in terms of hardware and software. In software, you probably need also some uh, upgrades like the temp server and, and, and the Athena version. Great, thanks, Julio. Um, maybe just one more clarification on a previous answer. Uh, there's a question asking, why do we need a duplicate of uh, motion correction and CTF, you know, one from Quality Monitor and one from Embedded CryoSpark Live? Uh, I think this, Julio, uh, for, for you, I think this ties into the previous answer, but maybe uh, just a little bit more clarity around, um, around that, about, you know, the differences between EQM and Embedded CryoSpark Live and the fact that, you know, it's either one or the other and not both. Yeah, exactly. So uh, something that has in common both programs is that they can perform motion correction and CTF estimation. So if you have only a, a smart TPU with EQM, you can do motion correction and CTF. If you have a smart TPU associated with embedded creators per life, then you have also additionally um, 2D and 3D image processing. Okay. Uh, but uh, what is common is motion correction as CTF. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think that provided a little bit uh, a little bit more clarity there, Julio. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, we're getting kind of towards the bottom of all the questions here, so maybe just one or two more uh, questions. Let's see. Uh, one, actually, I'll take another stab at uh, answering this one. About EPU multi grid, I just scroll by. It. Yes, someone asked, "Is is EPU multi grid included by default in Smart EPU?" And uh, and the answer to that is that EPU multi grid is is uh, is separate from Smart EPU. It's a it's an option uh, to be to be added to uh, to Smart EPU. But more information about that can be uh, yeah. Your account managers will have more information about about that. Uh, let's see. I think we're almost at the bottom here on questions. Um, again, another question about the GPU requirements for embedded CryoSpark Live. Uh, how many GPUs? It's again, this is included with uh, with the package, and it's uh, as I mentioned before, two GPUs are included to be installed on um, on the DMP server. Uh, let's see. I think. All of the other questions are sort of duplicates on the other ones. So with that, I might uh, bring this Q&A session to, uh, to a close. Uh, Julio, Ali, any uh, closing remarks, if any? No, um, probably, uh, my remark is that uh, we normally address uh, the questions afterwards uh, also individually. Uh, we can send uh, messages, answer um, something that we couldn't cover, maybe. Yeah, great.
Well, with that, I just wanted to maybe conclude this webinar by, by thanking everyone for their attendance. And, and I hope that you all found uh, this presentation by Julio Ali interesting and exciting on Embedded CryoSpark Live. And, and please, if there are any additional questions that come up, uh, please follow up with your account manager or us directly. So thank you. And I hope everyone uh, has a great rest of their uh, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you all. Thank you.